हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज डॉक्टर दीप्ति वारिकू डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजियोथेरेपी डॉल्फिन पीजी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ बायोमेडिकल एंड नेचुरल साइंसेस आर टुडेज टॉपिक इज हिप जॉइंट टुडे वी विल बी कवरिंग द अनाटमी ऑफ द हिप जॉइंट द हिप जॉइंट एज वी ऑल नो द कॉक्सा फेमोरल जॉइंट इज द आर्टिकुलेशन ऑफ द एस्टेबलम ऑफ द पेल्विस and the head of the femur these two here you could see the acetabulum and the head of the femur these two segments form a diarthodial ball and socket joint with 3 degrees of freedom when we talk about these 3 degrees of freedom we know we are talking about the flexion extension in the sagittal plane abduction adduction in the frontal plane and medial lateral rotation in the transverse plane so it is a synovial joint so when we talk about this synovial joint we le- let us see about the articulating structures of this joint so the bones involving in the hip joint are the ischium the ilium the pubis the femur the acetabulum is formed by pubis ischium ili- ilium bones and then the head of the femur is the next articulating structure so what are the primary roles or the primary function of the hip joint the primary function is to support the weight of the head the arms the trunk that we call it call as hat h a t head arm and trunk both in static erect posture as well as in dynamic postures such as ambulation that means while walking running or if you are climbing up or down the stairs the hip joint like the other joints of the lower extremity that we will examine in later stages it is the primary structure to serve its weight bearing function so two main functions are the weight bearing and another is to provide a pathway of transmission of forces between the lower extremity and the pelvis now let us talk about the structure of the hip joint so when we see the structure in the earlier slide also we see there is a proximal articulating surface and a distal articulating surface the proximal articulating surface is the cup like concave socket of the hip joint which we call as acetabulum the acetabulum is located on the lateral aspect of the innominate that is the pelvic bone uh the the acetabulum faces anterior inferior and lateral the acetabulum as we all know covers the head of the femur which is the distal articulating structure the acetab uh, the acetabulum has a horseshoe shaped portion that is the uh, lunate surface which is covered with hyaline cartilage and articulates with the head of the femur now there is some peculiarities in acetabulum the inferior aspect of the uh, lunate surface is interrupted by deep notch this notch is called as acetabular notch here you could see can you see this this is the acetabulum the inferior aspect has a deep notch here you could see which is called as acetabular notch the acetabular notch is spanned by fibrous bands that is the transverse acetabular ligament okay that is called as transverse acetabular ligament so this is called as transverse acetabular notch and the ligament which covers the transverse acetabular uh, is called as transverse acetabular ligament okay so next we will talk about the distal articulating surface the distal articulating surface is the femur head of the femur it is a fairly rounded hyaline cartilage covered surface that may be slightly larger than a true hemisphere or as much as 2/3 of the sphere depending on the body of the person the head of the femur is considered to be circular not like the you can see the it is totally circular and more in size as compared to the shoulder the radius of the curvature of femur head is smaller in women then in men okay so this is uh, something important just inferior to the most medial point on the femoral head 
is a small rounded pit which is called as fovea capitis the fovea is not covered with articular cartilage and is the point at which the ligament of the head of the femur is attached we will see that in later stages see this is the anterior view of the hip joint the surrounding ligaments posterior view of the hip joint and the surrounding ligaments now this uh, hip joint it is mainly considered to be stabilized first because of its shape which gives it most stability and second thing which is important is the joint capsule the joint capsule is a strong fibrous sheath fibrous sleeve like structure which covers the hip the articular capsule of the hip is strong and dense it is uh, very strong unlike as we see in the shoulder joint the hip joint capsule is a substantial contributor to the joint stability the capsule is attached proximally to the entire periphery of the scapula beyond the scapular labrum it covers the femoral head the neck like a sleeve and attached to the base of the neck the femoral neck is intracapsular whereas the greater and lesser trochanters are extracapsular you need to remember this the neck is intracapsular but the trochanters are extracapsular the synovial membrane lines the inside of the capsule the capsule has two sets of fibers okay two sets of fibers of the capsule of hip the longitudinal fibers more superficial and circular fibers the circular fibers form a collar around the femoral neck which is also called as zona orbicularis the capsule itself is thickened anterior anterior superiorly whereas the uh, whereas the predominant stress occurs it is relatively thin and loosely attached if we see in posterior inferior direction anteriorly there are longitudinal retinacular fibers deep in the capsule that travel along the neck towards the femoral head so this is the structure of the hip joint capsule here you could see the articular capsule and the synovial membrane of the hip joint in a section of hip now let us see some angles which are occurring anatomically around the hip joint so first angle what we will be discussing is the angle of inclination so there are actually two angulations made by the head and neck of the femur relative to the shaft one is the angle of inclination what we will be talking which occurs in the frontal plane between an axis through the femoral head and neck and the longitudinal axis of the femoral shaft here you could see axis through the head and longitudinal axis through the shaft this makes an angle the angle of inclination of femur uh, when a patient when the subject is in infancy is about 150 degrees so the angle formed by uh, this axis the inclination decreases to an average of 125 in normal adults and sometimes 120 in elderly people the angle of inclination varies among individuals and also in genders in women the angle is somewhat smaller than in men that may be due to the wider pelvis with a normal angle of inclination the greater trochanter lies at the level of the center of the femoral head so there could be some pathological conditions which we could see along with this uh, angle of inclination that we will see uh, in later stages next is the center edge angle uh, scapulum is oriented at the late uh, lateral side of the of each pelvis it is also directed somewhat inferiorly and anteriorly the magnitude of inferior orientation can be assessed by using a line which is connecting the lateral rim of the scapulum and the center of the femoral head this forms an angle known as central edge angle 
is also called as angle of Weiberg and is the amount of inferior tilt of your acetabulum. You could identify the inferior tilt of acetabulum with this central edge angle. The magnitude of anterior orientation of the acetabulum may be referred as angle of acetabular antiversion. Okay. And now let us see what are the uh, differences that are occurring at the angle of inclination as pathological conditions. A uh, pathological increase in the medial angulation between the neck and shaft is uh, increase is the coxa valga and pathological decrease is coxa vera. So an angle between femoral neck and shaft which is less than 115 degrees will cause a coxa vera. This will cause shortening of the limb, decrease the effectiveness of the abductors and increase the load on the femoral neck. This also reduces the load on the femoral head. So that is how it can cause biomechanical abnormality. Then if the angle is greater than 140 degrees, this inclination angle is greater, that causes coxa valga. This lengthens the limb, mimics contracture of the hip abductors, reduces the load on the femoral neck and increases the load on the femoral head. So this could also be some pathological thing. Then there is the next angle which is the angle of torsion. Angle of torsion of femur can best be viewed by looking down the length of the femur from the top. So the angle between the axis of the neck and the transverse axis that passes through the femoral condyle. See, this is the axis of the neck and this is the transverse axis passing from the condyle. This makes an angle which is called as angle of torsion. So, angle of torsion is mainly 15 degrees. So, if there is less than uh, 12 degrees, we could say it causes retroversion or if there is more than 15 degrees, it can cause antiversion. Okay. So, here you could see this is the excessive antiversion that is increase in the angle of torsion. This influences the rotation of the limb and here you could see produces the toes in the pigeon toe shape. Then this is the retroversion, there is decrease in the angle of torsion, this influences the rotation of the limb and produces the outer gait which is called as duck feet. So this was about the angles mainly which are being uh, present over the hip joint. Now let us discuss about the ligaments of the hip joint. The hip joint ligaments are mainly uh, giving a lot for the stability of the joint. Here we will be first talking about the ligament of the head of femur. That is the ligamentum teres. This ligament teres here, you could see this is the ligament teres. This is an intra-articular extrasynovial ligament. It is also called as ligament of head of femur. It is a triangular band if you see properly, which passes under the transverse which passes under the transverse estabular ligament to attach to the fovea. This ligament becomes tense in semiflexion and adduction. This is the ligament of head of femur also called as ligamentum teres. The next ligament is the transverse estabular ligament. The transverse estabular ligament also spans the estabular notch to create a fibro-osseous tunnel beneath the ligament through which the blood vessels may pass into the central or deepest portions of the estabular. This is also called as estabular fossa. Okay. The forms estabular fossa also. Okay. These are the two ligaments. Now we talk about the major ligaments, the ligaments over the reinforcing the hip joint. The hip joint is uh, having reinforcing capsular ligaments. So uh, the three traditional ligaments we see here are the two anterior ligaments which are the iliofemoral ligament and the pubofemoral ligament. 
the iliofemoral ligament is a fan shaped ligament here you could see it is a fan shaped ligament the iliofemoral ligament see here students it resembles an inverted y so therefore it's also called as y ligament of bigelow the apex of the ligament is attached to the anterior inferior iliac spine and the two arms of the y fan out to attach along the intertrochanteric line of the femur the superior band of the iliofemoral ligament is the strongest and thickest of the hip joint ligaments then the next is here you could see this one the pubo femoral pubo femoral ligament it is also anteriorly located arises from anterior aspect of the pubic ramus and passes to the anterior surface of the intertrochanteric fossa the bands of the iliofemoral and the pubofemoral ligament form a z see here can you see this it form a z on the anterior capsule similar to that of the you can you if you remember in the glenohumeral ligaments i hope you remember next is the posterior ligament the ischiofemoral ligament the ischiofemoral ligament at attaches to posterior surface of the acetabular rim and acetabular uh, labrum some of its fibers uh, are spiral around the femoral neck and blend with the fibers of zona orbicularis other fibers are arranged horizontally and attached to the inner surface of the greater trochanter so let us have a brief discussion about the ligaments these are the ligaments the ligament y pubofemoral ischiofemoral ligament of head of femur and transverse acetabular ligament so we know the location it is the anterior ligament these two are the anterior ligament forming the z, z shape then there is the ischiofemoral ligament the posterior ligament the anterior two ligaments prevent hyperextension during standing and limit abduction and extension the ischiofemoral ligament prevents hyperextension ligament of head of uh, femur may i already told you it is tensed in semi flexion and adduction then transverse acetabular ligament this helps hold the head in acetabulum fo acetabular fossa as already discussed so these are the ligaments of the head of uh, sorry hip joint so now the hip joint innervation we all know anteriorly we have femoral nerve and obit uh, uh, obturator nerve posteriorly small branches from sacral plexus the main nerves are the femoral obturator sciatic nerve to quadratus femoris and direct branches of the sacral plexus then the blood supply we have medial and lateral femoral circumflex arteries and the acetabular artery 30% of the blood supply is followed by them also the orbiturator artery and inferior gluteal arteries play a vital role in uh, blood circulation of the hip now the muscles uh, which are acting over the hip joint we will be discussing uh, in detail about the uh, role of muscles in biomechanics in the lecture of biomechanics of hip but here we will be seeing the primary functions of the muscles so external rotators are piriformis quadratus femoris obturator internus externus gamellus superior and inferior flexors are mainly iliopsoas and rectus femoris adductors are adductor magnus adductor longus and brevis and pectineus gracilis then internal rotators are gluteus medius minimus tensor fascia lata extensors are semi tendinosus semi -membr uh, membranosus biceps femoris gluteus maximus and abductors are your gluteus medius gluteus minimus okay so these are the basic occurring muscles over the hip joint so now we have discussed about the hip joint and its basic anatomy in the next class we will be discussing about the biomechanics of the hip joint if anyone has any doubt you can ask you can whatsapp me or you can drop a message i will be answering to it
see you all in the next lecture okay students have a great day